Hi, this is the video I haven't been wanting to make because uh, I want to put it out there that I successfully got off SSRIs and SNRIs, which is not the case. And I'm basically going to go over what has been going on in my mind for the past couple of weeks. So, as you guys probably know, I've been on Effexor and off Effexor twice now. It's okay to get off of it. I don't think it's hell if you do it wisely and I have got off and back on and back off and back on it now uh, with no issue and it works every single time. It's just a medication that I can't seem to do without. Um, there's always something. There's always something that leads me back to taking an SSRI or SNRI again. I'm just, it's a medication I am better on than off. Um, even with the side effects. Uh, so I kind of needed to make peace with my situation and accept the fact that I might be on an SNRI uh, like Effexor for uh, a little longer than I anticipated. And I've always been kind of interested in who I really am underneath the meds, right? Is it me or my meds? And there's a book appropriately titled, Is It Me or My Meds? by David A. Karp, Living with Antidepressants, Personal Accounts of People Who Are Struggling with That Question. Also, another famous one that you guys might have heard of is Listening to Prozac by Peter D. Kramer. This handsome chap over here of a psychiatrist. So, um, what what is the conclusion from reading these books? Um, who am I on medication, and uh, how does it affect me? Um, it's generally accepted that SSRIs and SNRIs like Prozac, Paxil, Zoloft, Effects, or Cymbalta, Prestige, and I'm probably missing Luvox, and all these all these serotonergic antidepressants or serotonergic and nor noradrenergic antidepressants. It's generally accepted that they actually can change your personality. With people with social anxiety who are normally socially inhibited, some of them take it and some of them find it a miraculous cure. All of a sudden they're social butterflies. They're almost completely different from their previous self. In some cases the change is much more dramatic. In some cases it is like just like a, like a patch or a medication that helps and it just covers the depression and it returns you to yourself. But what Peter D. Kramer, the author of Listening to Prozac, was kind of fascinated with was when his patients said it made them feel like themselves or, or, or the, this, the selves who, it made them feel like who they always knew they were at heart, which is kind of interesting. Like how is a medication that's changing someone so much? And that person's now able to say, this is the real me on it. And, 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 and all, it's in some cases, people say, this isn't the real me, and I don't like the way this makes me feel. And they go off the medication because they don't like it. But in some cases, the medication just jives with their personality, and they start defining themselves on the medication. And that's what happened to me. I made all these significant life changes on Effexor. I came out, I got diagnosed with Asperger's, I started really exploring my inner psyche and exploring who I was and I started relating to people more and I spoke with more people and I got more friends and, you know, I started dating, I know. Um, so all these, all these things that weren't, that it, it, I was the one doing all these things for sure. I wouldn't say it's purely the medication that's making you do that, but I have to attribute something to the medication. I have to say the medication made me more prone to change and I do feel different on it and I feel more confident and I don't have as much rejection sensitivity and there is significant differences. I'm not, I don't have obsessions which is the biggest, which is a big problem. Before, like in those couple of months that I had been making YouTube videos and that was, I was off Effexor, I was researching medications again, like voraciously. I was searching for the perfect drug again and I'm like, you just got off a medication. You want off everything. Why are you doing this again? And all my time you know, like I wouldn't be studying, I would just be searching medications. I was just going nuts. I was so obsessed with finding things and, you know, my thoughts were just harassing me again. And I'm just like, you know what, screw this, I'm going to go back on a fixer. And within like two days, I know it takes a while, but within two days, even the, f like the feeling of the drug in my system, I knew that like, okay, like I could take, I could take a breath now. And it's been once again, great 
on Effexor. Um, I think m one of my issues is that, like, so like I said before, I, I made so many life changes on the medication, and I've started defining myself as this person uh, because of all these changes that I'm, that I made. And off the medication, I was all of a sudden struck, like stricken with this, this is not me. It's it's weird. Like I said, like this isn't myself. I'm myself on the medication, which is kind of scary. There's something like creepy about that thought, and it's like I'm putting too much investment into this into this drug, and I'm letting it control too much of my life. But like on on the other hand, why not? Why not take the? Why not take the? the medication, you know? So, since I've been on SSRIs, I've been fascinated with books like I just showed you. Who am I under these? Un un who am I on this drug? What's the real me? Is this just uncovering the real me? Is this me without the deficits, without the obsessions, without the troubles? Or is this an altered self that I'm now defining as myself because I've been on these medications for six, seven years, a long time? And there is no answer. And all those books do if you if you're interested in purchasing those books those books are just going to get you more informed on the subject of what medication can and cannot do and how it can change someone and how it can't change someone it, it gives you insight based on personal accounts i was expecting to read this book and come up with some kind of answer and i don't it and they blatantly say there is no real answer who am i on this medication is it the real me or is it not they just give you evidence for these changes. So the decision is up to you. What they can do is they can make you more at peace with your situation. They can make you, they could kind of reduce the taboo or your, you know, the taboo in your mind of, okay, I'm on medication, I'm on mind altering drugs, you know? Like that's not really a nice thing to go on in, in your mind. Just the sheer number of people that are on these meds is kind of comfort in, in itself. Um, one thing that Peter Kramer talks about, uh, it's interesting, although this, this is, it's kind of anecdotal at this point, this came out in 1993 and he mentions that sexual side effects often don't uh, convince someone to go off the medication. I wouldn't say that's entirely true. I've been on many, many forums and people cannot stand the sexual dysfunction of SSRIs and SNRIs, especially Paxil, it's horrible. I was on it, I could not function, I could not deal with that. Um, Effexor has its sexual dysfunctions, but it's something I can live with. It's, um, it does, it does get better, but your sexual function isn't returned to levels, let's say, when you were off the medication, but I'm still functional sexually. Um, but it's just, uh, I don't know, it's interesting. Anyway, I, like, I could, you guys could probably tell that I've, that I've kind of, uh, have been honing in on the subject of, of who am I and um, I know I'm all gung-ho about getting off of Fixer and making these videos showing how easy it is and you know some people really do quit the meds and they really don't uh, they don't go back on them they 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 are in remission for me there's always something there's always something and it's not a weakness it's not like it's it's just these obsessions that start appearing in my mind again and it kind of, you know, like I, I, whenever I say I'm good, I don't need the meds anymore. I'm starting to think that's because I'm on the meds, and I'm view, and and I'm saying that from a healthy standpoint or a stable mind standpoint. Not that I'm unstable without the medications. I'm not falling into crippling depressions, but I'm not me off the medication, and I'm not. I'm not the person that's doing these YouTube videos for this channel. Weird, weird to say. Like, me doing these videos on the channel is, is indirectly a product of the medication and a product of my confidence when I have my neurons soaking in serotonin. <laughs> that sounds so nerdy. Uh, <laughs> 
I don't, I've been hesitant to make this video because I because uh, I wanted to be like, yep, yeah, I'm off, I'm off all SSRIs and SNRIs, but no, I'm not. I take 150 milligrams of Effexor in the morning, and I take uh, uh, 30 milligrams of uh, mirtazapine at night. This combo is known as California rocket fuel because it really puts people in uh, remission from their depression. It's you could read about it, it's kind of a funny name, California Rocket Fuel. It's a combo of mirtazapine and venlafaxine. So that's what I've been on, and I'm going to stay on it for a while. I'm fine, I've made peace with my situation. I, I, I recognize these meds aren't for everyone, but uh, I feel better and more myself on SNRIs than uh, without them. And that's it. Thank you for watching.